Microsoft just announced the Windows 11 24H2 update, promising significant improvements to X Elite powered laptops coming out, especially for X86 emulation. That update is being pushed out to people on preview channels, so do we see any performance improvements for older Windows on ARM machines? And this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the people that subscribe to this channel share these videos across social media and the very generous supporters on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on that later in this video. 24H2 is here and I finally loaded it on my Robo and Kala. This is a last gen Snapdragon chipset. This is the 8CX Gen 3. It took forever for this update to load. Failed twice on me. If you're having some issues for some reason, if you just set it to update and restart, it would crash on my tablet. If I set it to update and shut down, for some reason that worked. But it's here and we can talk about it. I've run my tablet through just a couple basic tests. This isn't gonna be an hour long comprehensive video of every single performance metric. Just on some of the apps that I actually use, have there been any performance improvements? As a baseline, I like to start off with the synthetic benchmarks, Geekbench 6. I've been showing off these CPU scores for Windows on ARM for a while now, but one of the things that's always been problematic has been the GPU benchmark in Geekbench. It's actually a pretty common gripe for ARM PCs in general. There are a lot of apps that still just can't see the Adreno GPU. But I ran Geekbench before updating, I got these scores. Then after updating, we saw just a little nudge to the single core CPU scores. Not quite a 10% up, lift, but that's not too shabby. More exciting though, Geekbench could finally see the GPU in my tablet and I could run the GPU bench for the first time on my Robo and Kala, getting this score of 12,000. For the era that this chip was first launched, that's actually pretty good graphics performance. Moving on, I've been trying to track browser performance a little bit more. It's something I'm a bit more interested in as we get the X Elite chips out. Before updating, Firefox, load up Browser Bench. This is Browser Bench 2.1 because I want to keep these scores consistent with what we saw from Qualcomm's testing of X Elite. Qualcomm kept showing us tests and results from Browser Bench 2.1, not the more current Browser Bench 3. But Firefox did okay here, especially as this sort of contraption was built to do battle somewhere between an 11th gen Core i3 and an 11th gen Core i5. I run the Windows update and yet again we see almost, but not quite, a 10% uplift to that same browser bench. Feeling pretty good so far, these almost 10% uplifts. It's like getting a, a just a little bit of a nudge. It's not quite an upgrade, but it's just a fresh feeling for this tablet. So now we gotta try something just a little bit more difficult. My favorite photo editing software is Affinity 2. And Affinity 2 runs okay when you actually have it loaded, but it's a really pokey piece of software. It takes a while to get started, and then anything that you do in Affinity has a little bit of a lag to it. The tablet can do it, just doesn't do it that nice. Breaking this down into three very basic pieces, just loading the program to start. Before the update, I would fire up Affinity and timing it, it took just a little over 22 seconds for Affinity to pop up on my screen. After the update, that didn't really change. In fact, it got a little bit slower. It took almost 24 seconds after the Windows 11 update, but then dropping in a raw file. Before the update, just dragging a raw file over to the window Letting it open in that window took nine and a half seconds. After the update, that was whittled down to just over six seconds. This tablet's never gonna be a screamer for doing a lot of raw editing and raw photo processing, but that was a significant upgrade just to the feel, the experience of working on a file. The tablet felt a lot more responsive than it has been in the past. Then similarly, we would click on the little develop button just to kind of get through some of our edits. Before the update, that took 13 seconds for that develop processing to happen. After the update, that time was cut in half, down to 6.3 seconds to do that same develop process. And that made me real happy. Moving on, just a great little piece of audio editing software, just something universally accessible. I fired up Audacity before the update. It took about four and a half seconds to load. And just like Affinity, after the update, it still took almost five seconds to get that program up on my screen. But I wanted to try something in the app just a little bit chewier. I took an hour long podcast recording and I ran a noise reduction filter on it. Before the update, I was actually kind of impressed just given 
the sort of overall performance of this tablet, it only took five minutes and 12 seconds to do a full noise reduction sweep across an hour long audio track. But here's where things get a little bit better. After the update running that same noise reduction plugin, our time was cut from over five minutes to just over two minutes. It did it in less than half the time. And that made me so happy. I got my hopes up when I saw that Geekbench could finally properly see the GPU in my Robo and Kala, and I was hoping that this would extend better support to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve still installs. It says that there's a capable GPU, but then when you go to launch the program before and after the update, nothing has changed. DaVinci still does not see proper OCL support from the Adreno GPU. So I still cannot test what this older system would have been capable of in a legit video editing workflow. I don't think this thing would have been great for higher tier video editing, and especially when you run the Blackmagic raw speed test. Really, we would have capped this thing out at just editing good 1080p videos. Editing 4K seems like it would have been a stretch. Like I said, I'm not digging super into all of the permutations and performance benchmarks and all of the synthetic tests, but I did want to fire up control. When we went down to San Diego to test drive the X Elite chip in in Qualcomm's reference design systems. One of the games they showed off was Control running at 1080p with low to medium graphic settings, but staying pretty consistently around 30 frames per second while exploring the complex. A lot of people got real skeptical about that kind of performance, but those are all the people that haven't been paying attention to Windows on ARM. I recently showed on this Robo Encala, which the 8CX Gen 3 chip is significantly less powerful than the X Elite will be. I had no issues going to thesteam.com and installing my copy of Control, not a special ARM version of Control, just the same copy of the game that's accessible to everyone on Steam. And if I turned off literally every graphic setting set everything down to the low as possible quality and I was gaming at closer to 480p resolution, I could keep control running in the high 20s while exploring the complex with, you know, some pretty significant 1% lows as I was doing some combat. Not even combat, just running around and blowing up tables to see like particle effects and debris flying all over the place. After the update, the performance was a little bit more consistent in the low 30s at that 480p resolution, so I tried bumping it up to 720p. And there are these really obnoxious sort of lock moments where the game sort of stops, like a 1% low down at like five frames per second. But on the whole, it was much better able to keep frame rates in the high 20s at 720p. One tick up the resolution ladder. I still wouldn't say this is the way you would want to play control, but the game looks a lot nicer going from 480p resolution to 720p resolution. It's making me a little bit more excited for how far we might be able to drive X Elite in its first generation of laptops. I am quite pleased with this Windows update. This has kind of injected a little bit more life, a little bit more performance into my Robo Encala, a tablet I already loved. It's not going to be as powerful as an iPad Pro running an M4, but it's got a full version of the Windows operating system on it, and it's getting even better compatibility and support for all the legacy programs we seem to be really concerned about. I would like to hear from you. Do you have some older Windows on ARM gear lying around? Do you have like a Surface X or a Surface Pro SQ3, maybe that Lenovo laptop? Have you tried installing Windows 11 24 H2? I think you might be pleased with the outcome, but drop some comments down below and let's see if there are other significant performance uplifts for some of the even older Snapdragon chips out there. And as we start testing all of this, and as X Elite systems enter the gadget lab, the first folks who are going to hear about my performance testing and my metrics and my results are the lovely people on my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. They get early access to my videos. They get the 4K versions of my videos and none of my reviews and editorials and these videos just talking to the camera right here. None of it would be possible without their generosity. I greatly appreciate everybody who subscribes to this channel and shares videos across social media. And if you have the means, I'd really appreciate it if you could check out the community there. It's a really fun group of geeks. They're basically the coolest people in the universe. A huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping us to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days, Trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.